morning. Do you care how your tax dollars are spent? Of course you do. Everyone does. And our guest this morning, it's her job to oversee uh, how uh, well or poorly or efficiently your tax dollars are spent. She is the state auditor of Massachusetts, Suzanne Bump. Welcome. Lovely to be back. Good to have you here. We Thank appreciate you. it when you come by here, especially since you've been doing a series of audits recently, including one that we're going to focus on today, having to do not so much with how money's being handled, but how good or poor a job state agencies are doing reaching out to the people who are supposed to benefit from our tax dollars. Tell me a little more about what you've been doing. Well, thanks, John. I take a very broad view of program integrity, so it isn't just a matter of identifying fraud or misspending or waste in government. It's also making sure that the programs that have been designed to serve our public, uh, whether they are children or uh, the elderly or the uh, infirm, are actually meeting their mission. And in this, uh, in this latest audit, we looked at veteran services, but we'd also looked at the catastrophic uh, uh, illness in children fund, uh, and we have others planned that are asking this question, is the agency meeting its mission? Well, and by the way, if viewers have an agency they'd like you to look at, how do they let you know about it? Oh, they can go right to our website. Okay. We are uh, delighted to accept ideas from the public. Uh, okay. We have done audits based on public recommendations uh, as well as on legislative recommendations. So if you visit uh, the uh, auditor's um, office website, okay. mass.gov slash auditor, uh, you'll find out how you can submit your idea. All right, well, let's talk about the veterans because uh, there's, uh, I think they're high on the list of any group, uh, veterans in need, that, that people want to see taken care of by their right. tax dollars. You found that the Department of Veteran Services you know, pays out more than 50 million a year in veterans benefits through these local, they're called veterans services officers, right. who are in turn appointed by the local POLs. And they're in charge of promoting veterans causes, seeing to it that they're alerted to the benefits that are available to them. Uh, they haven't been doing a very good job of it. Is That's the bottom line, right? Well, they um, they could be doing a better job of it, let's say. Uh, the the uh, state agency, the Department of Veteran Services, is responsible for getting to the local service agents uh, information about who the veterans are in their communities. Uh, and this, the state agency has not been done, done a very good job of identifying all of the veterans who are in the Commonwealth who might be eligible for the financial support programs that the state provides. Uh, we know you, you're familiar, I think most of your viewers are so familiar with the fact that the state helps support um, veterans' homeless shelters, but there are additional way, monies that are made available to support veterans in need. We're not doing, they're not doing a very good job of identifying them so that then the vet, local veterans' agencies can make contact with them and help make sure that they're getting access to all the benefits that we make available. Well, in fact, you surveyed a group of 100 cases of veterans, and and you found that in 89% 89 of those cases, they didn't make sure to notify vets of their benefit eligibility. That's, that's not just not a very good job. That's a horrible job, yeah, Auditor. The, the standards aren't very high. The tools aren't very good um, that they are using. Um, they, we also found um, it wasn't a lot of money, but we also found that benefits had been paid out that shouldn't have been paid out because uh, the methods for monitoring uh, who is uh, who has passed away aren't aren't sufficient. Um, you, you can't just look read it read a death notice in the paper. Yeah, You've got to be, you've gotta be using technology and connecting into other sources of data that will provide you the information about who's out there and who's eligible and who has passed away and therefore is no longer eligible. I mean, I want to make sure, we have to break, but I want to make sure our viewers understand that you found that uh, in, in the case of, there were 50 veterans who had passed away who were nonetheless sent checks, benefit checks. Uh, and these local veteran services officers were determining whether a vet had passed away 
by looking for obits in the local paper? I mean, that's like something out of the 1950s. <laughs> well, it's, it certainly is not taking advantage of all of the data resources that are out there. The Social Security Administration has what it calls the death match list. And that's how um, government programs all over the place identify who has passed away and therefore shouldn't, shouldn't continue to get benefit checks. Makes you wonder if these veteran services officers even know how to use the internet in some cases. Well, to, <laughs> to, to, uh, you have to say for some of them, out, out in western Massachusetts, they don't even have the internet. Wow, that's scary. All right, we have to take a break. When we continue, we'll talk more about waste in Massachusetts government with our guest, the state auditor, Suzanne Bump. Stay with us. Welcome back. We're talking with state auditor, Suzanne Bump. And Suzanne, you've... Uh, it's been clear you haven't been a big fan of the practice of privatization uh, whereby state government bypasses uh, the public employee workforce in a specific for a specific task or function and goes to the private sector and you're, you're currently in the process of reviewing uh, the way privatization determinations are made your office is in charge of signing off on right. privatization applications uh, except uh, in in the process of trying to fix the MBTA the legislature exempted the MBTA from the privatization law for a period of time and recently there's been a lot of controversy over an MBTA plan to privatize part of its bus maintenance operation right. now I know you're not signing off on this because they're exempt but I'm sure you've taken an interest in it uh, the unions say it's a travesty it's the governor breaking his promises the governor says we're saving millions and reforming antiquated practices who's telling the truth well that the point is that we don't know because they exempted the uh, the MBTA the, they being the legislature exempted the MBTA from the requirements of the privatization law which my office uh, implements we don't know who's telling the truth and that's uh, why I have been um, had been opposed to exempting the MBTA because the privatization law requires an agency that wants to privatize a government service uh, to make its case, uh, the, do the cost-benefit analysis and present it to an objective party, that being the auditor's office, to determine whether, the, um, whether it really is going to cost money, uh, whether the quality is going to be maintained, and what the other impacts are going to be on the workforce and on the, on the, uh, on the public. And uh, so we don't know who's telling the truth there. We don't know how much this is really going to save because they haven't had to come before us. And, and I would point out that quite apart from my own feelings, I've approved privatization um, proposals and most of the, the vast majority of privatization proposals that have come not just before me but before my predecessor um, have been approved because it has forced the administration, whoever that has been, to make the case and therefore the taxpayers can have confidence that it's not just a matter of political expediency, it's not just a matter of political philosophy that's driving these big decisions about how well the public is going to be served, and, but it's it's in the taxpayer interest. And yet we all had a graphic demonstration in that horrendous winter of 15 of what a basket case MBTA operations had become and bus maintenance yeah. there have been multiple studies long delays in getting parts uh, uh, maintenance ratios that are way out of whack uh, why not uh, are, are you opposed to the uh, further efforts to privatize those services in theory or no not? no I'm not okay. but I think but what we're seeing is that these are management failures these are not Right. Failures of the of the rank and file workforce, but it's the rank and file workforce that suffers through the, from the, the effects of privatization. Well, not uh, in this bus maintenance privatization. That would privatize the management structure there. Oh, and no, and also the uh, the the workers. The not workers the mechanics. Are not the mechanics. Some of them are. Some of the machinists are going. All right, but finish yeah. your point because yeah. we have to. But but that is but that is the point is that we don't know. What, uh, whether this is actually going to serve the best interests of the taxpayers or of the riders because it's not going through a process um, where the administration justifies uh, its proposal. Our time's up. A lot more we could talk about. Let's do it. Let's address it when we get together again soon. Love to do so. Thank you very much. Thank you. State Auditor Suzanne Bump, that's it for me. Now I'm going to send it back over to my colleagues for more WBZ News.